Joined by Taylor Rogers, the Padres' newest closer. First of all, how are you liking San Diego and the new team? Can't beat San Diego. Um, I caught myself checking the weather the first couple days and realized you don't have to do that. Um, Shorts every day. Yeah, and then uh, teammates are, are coming. They're, they're great guys to start. And then, uh, you know, as the season goes along, you start to yeah. gather more camaraderie. But so far, so good. So you kind of have to let it come organically when you come to a new team, just kind of let it flow? Yeah, uh, definitely don't want to force it. Um, they were great. You know, it kind of felt like it's a distraction there for a little bit. You know, like the new guy on opening day and then playing my brother and having all that. I felt like a little bit of a distraction, but they handled it awesome. And, you know, I knew a couple guys from before, so that certainly helped a little bit. We're going to get to the, the brother thing in a little bit, but I want to start with being a closer. What, what, what kind of mentality do you have or do you feel like you have to have to be a closer? I like, uh, I like carrying that mentality on the way to the ballpark, like knowing that if that opportunity presents itself, like it's mine and I want to shut it down. Um, I always kind of carry the mindset of the guys that are playing worked hard for two and a half hours to get the game where it's at. It's my job to not mess it up. So uh, really I just try to, um, for lack of a better term, save what they've done uh, throughout the day and, and save their hard work. Don't take this the wrong way. I feel like you and many other players, you're kind of unassuming, right? Like if you put on a cap and a hoodie, you could go into Starbucks and maybe blend in the crowd or something like that, right? Like a lot of baseball players. Do you do you feel like you're flipping a switch? I mean, even Bob Melvin said the other day, like when you get on the mound, you kind of do have a menacing presence to you, but off the, off the mound, you know, you're pretty friendly. So is there a difference to you? I love, uh, you know, I think it's part of carrying that, that mindset in your back pocket all day. Um, it's one of those things I kind of learned from Joe Maurer, just watching him. Um, you know, they say Minnesota Joe, and just the way he treated people, I tried to keep that. Um, but at the same time, as soon as you step in between the lines, let it go. And that, may, that takes time to, uh, to figure it out. But I think if you carry a mindset throughout the day, it, it makes it easier to flip that switch. I love that. You're so effective at getting out righties and lefties. How would you describe yourself, your pitching style, and what you, what you do best? I think, you know, obviously it, it's not a secret, you know, it's fastball slider and, um, you know, early in my career I, I had a little bit of an issue with righties. I, I came up as the loogie and as the three better minimum came in, I was like, man, I better figure something out or I'm going out with the loogie. Um, so yeah, I just tried to learn the slider and take a little bit more of a informational approach against righties and, you know, I seem to do okay against lefties. Um, but honestly, it's just day-to-day uh, -day dictated. What do you have? What pitches do you have working that day? And, um, you know, sometimes the new catcher, that maybe they see some things different too. So, you know, it's kind of balancing, you know, trust in your teammates and trust in yourself and honestly just feeling the flow. You really don't seem like you've had many nerves running out. I mean, you've done back-to-back -back saves. You don't feel like you, it doesn't seem like you've had much getting used to here. Oh, I'm just faking it. <laughs> I'm faking it. You know, I'm close to LA, so figure got to act a little bit. It's got to be all Hollywood. Yeah. I like it. Okay, fake it till you make it. That's what they say. Right? Yeah, and then keep on faking it. It's it's been electric. Uh, you know, it was uh, especially the one in San Francisco. That was uh, that was an emotional one, trying to corral all the yeah. all the emotions there. And then this first one at home was was incredible. And I think it just drew on experience a little bit with those. Uh, you got to slow down and catch your breath and relax your shoulders and at the same time knowing that your adrenaline's up so you don't need to necessarily throw harder because you're going to throw hard anyway. And that was through trial and error. Um, you know, so I think I drew on a little bit of experience there and this has been a good experience as well, uh, learning you know, kind of a new situation and a new roller role per se. So uh, just trying to gather as much information. Do you like the closer role the best? Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a lot of pressure, um, but uh, I, I try to relish it. And um, like I said, I just like carrying that mentality throughout the day and just kind of feel like a protector of the team. And, and hopefully that's what I can do. Like you're at Costco and you need to like make sure the groceries come through 
correctly. Like it's like that mentality every day. Like I'll be that guy, or you bring me bring me the receipt, and I'll look through the whole list and then give you the mark off. Yeah. Close it out. I love it. I love it. Okay, your song when you run out. Um, Fleet, Fleetwood Mac, right? Fleetwood Mac's the chain. Yeah. How did you get to that song? Why is that your song? When I was in Minnesota, this was like 2018, 2019. Um, we were a little bit behind the times. We didn't have walk-ups for relievers, and just a couple times I'm out there, and they were doing like a promotion on the board, or one time they played single ladies, and we're like, we gotta, we gotta get this together. And single I'll, ladies when you ran out? Yeah, yeah. So we're like, we need to do something here, and um, basically what happened was, long story short, my teammates uh, sent up a message and said, play the chain when when Rogers comes in, and I've just rolled with that. Was it one of their favorite songs or your favorite song or had they heard you play it or? They just thought it fit me. The chain, you're, you're not breaking the chain, like yeah. that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, you know what, uh, I, again, I just trusted the teammates and uh, it worked out and we're just going to ride the wave. It's a great song, I love that song personally. Um, but you know, people here are so used to Hell's Bells and things that follow, so I think it's getting taken some like getting used to maybe, you know? Hey, if I can channel like 1% of Trevor Hoffman and we'll be in a good spot. Who was your favorite closer growing up? You know, I never really had a favorite closer because uh, I was a starter my whole career until I got to the big leagues. Um, I always liked uh, Mike Hampton. I followed him a lot and uh, Jeff Francis. Those were my guys. And then uh, as I got older and as I got into professional baseball, uh, Andrew Miller's been my guy. That's I emulated, tried to emulate everything that he was doing from his stretch routine to the way he threw. And I just tried to be Andrew Miller, so that's it. Do you ever miss starting? Was that a hard adjustment to make, or? No, no. I mean, at the time, it was like, hey, you can start in AAA or you can be in the big leagues. So it's like, well, that's a pretty easy decision. Um, but I really love having an impact daily. Yeah. And uh, I like that, where you can show up to the ballpark and you're, there's a chance you can play every day. You're like a kicker or an offensive lineman. Like, nobody notices you until you mess up. Uh, so, you know, if I cannot get noticed, we're doing something right. It's always good when you never know the offensive lineman. You just know the ball's getting down the field, right? I love it. Okay, let's go to your brother. You have a twin brother, Tyler, plays for the Giants. You guys made history, the fifth set of twins to ever play in a, in a major league game together. When you look back on that moment now, you've had a little distance from it. How special was it? How significant was it? It was really cool. It's the whole thing. Um, you know, that was never, obviously we always had a dream of getting to the major leagues, but we never dreamed about like actually playing each other or actually pitching in the same game. Like that's so far beyond the realm of thinking that um, exactly, it took some time to kind of gather the emotions and put some words to it. But uh, I think um, just looking at his path to the major leagues and uh, you know, he had a little bit of a harder road and I, for me, it was just more of being proud than anything. He made it to the major leagues a few years after you, right? So did you guys, did he lean on you a lot during that process? He did, and you know, it was hard for him, you know, obviously, when, you, when you're twins, everybody wonders why the other one's not doing the same thing, and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been nice, we can create our own identity, and now we've kind of come together in, you know, in this weird way, and Everybody knows this is Taylor and Tyler separately instead of just the twins. And I think that for us, that's huge. I have a lot of twin questions. Don't hate me. But one of them is that, right? When you grow up as a twin, as twins, you're kind of always lumped together. Did you guys, was that the case for you? Did you like that? Or did you kind of, as you got older, say, okay, we got to separate ourselves? Yeah. You know, I wouldn't trade it, but we were, it was always the twins or Tay and Ty or which one are you? You know, we shared a vehicle in high school and like, always had you know we always went to baseball together and all this stuff so it was always a package deal yeah. and then when we went to college it was super weird because my best friend was no longer with me and I had to start yeah. doing things on my own but in a roundabout way that was good for both of us we could become our own person develop your own traits and then how cool is it now we're kind of like bringing it back uh, so it's been awesome yeah full circle now you're in the same division so you get to see each other a lot your family can come see each other a lot or relatively closer so I'm sure that's great for everybody it sounds like yeah it's gonna be fun uh, there's uh, over two weeks worth of baseball games where we're playing each other and probably hasn't happened since you guys were like kids and playing on the same team maybe right yeah. right yeah. it was cool to that first day in San Francisco 
you know, all the family was back waiting on the on the baby, so it was just Ty and I. And I really enjoyed the fact that it was just us enjoying it together and taking it in together. Like, no offense to them, but there was no other obligations or anything you felt like you had to do. It was just us, and we just got to enjoy it. So that was cool. That is awesome. Who's older? I'm older. I came out like 30 seconds before him. Do you give him, like, do you, do you tell him, hey, I, I'm, I'm in charge, you got to do what I say? Yeah, I always give the speech of, you know, I'm older, wiser, and better looking. So you're from Colorado, went to the University of Kentucky, played for the Twins. So this is really your first time on the West Coast, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, first time, really. Um, Are you I, looking forward to anything? Are you, like, like wanting to go to the beaches? Are you anything that you're really hoping to do? Yeah. You know, through the last week to 10 days, I've realized I'm not going to try to hope for anything or search anything out. I'm just going to let it happen and enjoy the process because that's what's been so cool about this yeah. is things I didn't expect have come up. And I mean, I, I feel like there's been so many memories that I've been able to create so far that I don't want to forget anything. So I'm just letting it happen. And I mean, the grass is better here and the weather is better. It's, it's, it's amazing. All right, last question. If you weren't a Major League Baseball player, you would be a? I'd be a firefighter. Um, my brother and I would be fifth generation firefighters. So no way. that was my dream before baseball. We kind of just took it like, let's just play baseball as long as we can. And we'll always go back and, you know, go to fire science, go to the fire academy. And it just hasn't happened yet. So your, so your dad or your parents, firefighters? My dad, uncle, grandpa, great grandpa. Uh, there's been a Rogers as a fireman in the city of Denver for over 100 years. And I always joke, uh, can't believe the city hasn't burned down yet. No, that's uh, that's a respectable line of work. They, uh, that's another one of those things that um, you don't think about them until you need them. I mean, it's amazing. So maybe down the road, you and you and Tyler might join that crew. I, I think we got to uh, we got to keep up the generation. And Tyler just had a, a baby boy, so maybe he can be the sixth. Taylor, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem.